This podcast is brought to you by Uconnect, the creator of the first all-in-one virtual career center. Scale your impact and engage more students with a platform that puts all of your career resources in one place. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Career Everywhere podcast. I'm your host, Meredith Metzger, and this week I'm excited to welcome Laura Kestner Ricketts, the Executive Director of Career and Professional Development at Augustana College. In this episode, I talk with Laura about how to introduce faculty to career resources in a super scalable, efficient way. And Laura would know, she recently built and launched a 45-minute program that trains faculty on how to navigate the Career Center website and use all of the resources. Laura shares a step-by-step overview of the program, how she built it to be highly engaging and interactive, and what she's hearing from faculty. Thank you for being here, Laura. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited for today. Me too. And I am especially excited to have you on the show today to talk about how you're introducing faculty to the Career Center's resources. I think we all know that faculty can be incredible partners, but sometimes it's hard to get them all up to speed on what the Career Center can offer in a scalable, effective way. So I'm really excited to dig into how you're doing that at Augustana. But first, for those of you listening or watching, I want to give a little background on Laura. She has worked in career services for about 30 years, leading career centers at Clark College, Marquette, and now Augustana. She's also a former president of Midwest ACE. She's worked with thousands of students and hundreds of faculty members over the years, and she's developed a super cool method for introducing faculty to her career center's website and their resources in a really in-depth and interactive way in just 45 minutes, which is blows my mind. <laughs> uh, so before I get into all of that, Laura, is there anything else you'd like to add about yourself, your role at Augustana or your background? Oh, gosh, no. I mean, nothing crazy. Well, I will allude to it, but I am really a fan of life design and recently went through the um, life design studio at Stanford. And so if anyone wants to talk to me about that, reach out because I'd love to talk about it. Okay. I'm assuming you know Joe Catrino then, because he mentioned that on this podcast a few weeks ago. (laughs) Oh, did he? Okay. There were a hundred of us in the session, so I didn't know if he was in my session or not. Yeah, that's great. Well, cool. Okay. So before I get into the more specific questions about our topic, I want to ask you a question I've been asking all of our guests on this podcast, and that's what does career everywhere mean to you? Well, I love the concept of career everywhere, and I I use it a lot, and we've been using it a lot more. But really, to me, it means it's a concept of we never know when some information or some interaction with a student is going to be like the missing piece that clicks for them and gets them into a, a different place. I can think of my own, you know, aha moment. And I was a sophomore in college and I met with someone and I'm sure she had no idea that she just gave me the next step. So I think it's really important to remember that every conversation we have, every interaction with student may have a piece to what their next step in their career is. So career happens everywhere, not just in a career center. It happens in the snack bar, at the coffee shop, walking down the, you know, icy steps, things like that. So that's what it means to me. Oh, I love that. It's a team sport, really, is what career everywhere is. Exactly. And you may not even know that you're playing, right? (laughs) Good point. Yeah. Do you offer labor market data to your students and other on-campus stakeholders? Having access to top hiring companies, skill and education requirements, salaries, and more can be a critical tool in career exploration and advancement. That's why Uconnect is offering a free trial of our Labor Market Insights module, powered with data from our partners at Lightcast, a leading labor market data company. To learn more, visit gouconnect.com slash LMI. That's L as in labor, M as in market, and I as in insights. Start your free trial today. All right, so now I want to talk about how you're leveraging your faculty partners at Augustana and how you're training them on what the Career Center does and what your team can offer. I know you've recently launched a Career Readiness Champions Network there at Augustana. So can you maybe start by giving me a quick overview of what that entails and why you created it? Sure. 
So I think a lot of campuses are really plugging into that idea of career everywhere, right? And, you know, when you think of everyone on campus, who has the most contact with students? It's really the faculty. They're the ones that see them, at least during the semester, you know, every day or every other day. And so really tapping into faculty and also staff who work with student-facing positions. So what we wanted to do was really help make sure that those people who are interacting with students have the resources and tools that they need to really move a student through the process, make it easier for those students. And so we developed, we had our first cohort start in October. We decided to to call it the Career Readiness Champions Network. It's not just faculty, so faculty and staff. And the faculty and staff members were invited, and we got the names because in our end-of-the-year survey, we asked students to list someone on campus who had a positive impact on their career decision-making or their career success. And last year, we had 140 faculty and staff whose names were given to us. So we reached out to them, invited them, and of those, 41 signed up and wanted to be part of our network. So um, that's kind of how it got started. Okay. I love that idea of of including that question in the student survey. That's genius. It's really great. It's really great. And then we know like who our partners are, right? We don't have to convert them. Right. Exactly. What does this program kind of entail? Like, I think you mentioned before that it's several sessions. Can you kind of walk me through what those include? Sure. So it's a four sessions. We have four sessions and it's the whole academic year. So we know that, you know, faculty are busy, everyone's busy, and this is really an add-on for them. And so this is not part of the tenure and promotion process. It's not something they get credit for, right? So we wanted to make it easy yet effective use of time. So we're doing four 75-minute sessions spread throughout the fall and spring semester. And the first session is really about what is career development. Now, our office, we're called Career Development and Vocation. We're steeped in Lutheran traditions. But when we talk about vocation, we are not necessarily talking about a life in the church. We use the word as how can you serve the world? That's how we use it, right? So career development and vocation, helping faculty and staff understand What do we mean by career development and vocation? Walking them through the career development process using some language that resonates with us. The second session is services and resources. So we'll circle back to that one, but really introducing them to all the things we do, right? Because everyone thinks we just do resumes, right? I'm the resume lady on campus. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The third one is called career conversations, and that's rooted in career conversations, career everywhere, right? So what are common career conversations? What are ways to help sort of draw out more information, maybe challenge um, them, helping faculty to be more curious with students around it versus having a student say, I want to be this, and then show them how to be that. Really ask some questions. Tell me more about that. What about that, um, you know, interests you? Do you think you have the skills? So really helping them with that. Um, And then the fourth one is really theory to practice. So what does this look like, right? How might a conversation move a student in telling and sharing stories? And then we are addressing the DEI, the diversity, equity, and inclusion. We know that so many of our students are coming from spaces and places that maybe they don't have the networks, right? They don't have the parents who have the old neighbors that can hook them up with a summer internship, right? So really making sure that faculty and staff are knowledgeable and understanding that not every student comes from a place where doing an unpaid internship in New York City that's not really an option for most students. So how can we make sure that that's a part of the piece when when working with students? So those are our four areas. Okay. Sounds like a pretty good breadth of knowledge that the faculty will gain once they go through this program. Hopefully. (laughs) (laughs) I guess that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I would love to dig more into that second session. So the one that where you kind of really dig into the services that you offer and the resources available for students. So can you just kind of walk me through what that session looks like? 
Sure. And I can take credit for some of it, but a lot of this really just comes from what we would say is active learning methods. So I was privileged at my uh, former institution to take a two-day course on active learning methods and how to better engage students. And that's where this came from. If people are interested in that, I would recommend that they reach out to their like faculty enrichment center or learning and uh, center. So they're called different things at different colleges. But that's how I was introduced to this type of activity. So basically what we do is, this was 45 minutes, and we've also incorporated this now into classes. So I do this with students now as well. We do this in person, but it can be easily moved to a virtual platform with breakout rooms. So first, basically, I introduce the group to our website, the platform. Um, One thing that we have good or bad, is that this is the first time we've been able to manage the content on our own website for careers. So we feel like probably everybody in the late 90s felt when they had their own website. That's how we feel. So um, we're really excited just to share our new website with so many. But what we do is we introduce them to the website, and then we briefly move them through what we would call our signature resources. The ones that I use that we move people through is, so I show them the whole website and then I go through these six. So one is our affinities, identities, right? So you Connect offers a platform that allows you to curate resources based on whatever you choose for affinities and identities. And so that's, I think, really important for our students to see that it's not just cookie cutter, but we do have information for our LGBTQ students or our international students, our students of color, all of that. So we have resources for them. The second one is Candid Career. So our place where students can see videos and learn more about careers from the person. Maybe I'm not supposed to explain each of these, but I'm going to. Is that okay? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Okay, great. (laughs) The third is Career Paths. So this is where students can choose resources based on kind of what we call field of interest might be. So if I'm interested in environmental careers, then that's one of our career paths. The next one is the Labor Market Insights. So if you're not familiar with the Labor Market Insights, it's basically, and I can't keep track of who owns it now, but it was Burning Glass, MC, I don't know who it is now. They're called Lightcast now. Lightcast, okay, (laughs) great. So this is, you know, real-time information about what are the trends, what are the job titles, all of that. So students can, instead of relying on the Bureau of Labor Statistics data, which I have done most of my career, students can find this. So the labor market insights can be used in a lot of different ways. And I think it's a really important tool. The other one is our Viking Connections, which is basically our alumni network. So they can see how the alumni who want to connect with students and help them. And the last one is Viking Score, which is basically our career pathing program. So students earn points for career activities that they complete, including reflections and processing. So students earn points and then we give away prizes. We basically bribe students to do career stuff. That's how I like to explain it. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do, right. So basically, I walk them through that, but I don't do all of that. I just show them where they are and where this might be. Then I have them break into groups of six, and they actually move to a table with six people in each of the groups. And then I hand them a piece of paper that just says affinities, identities, and then I give the URL or kind of explain how to find it. So I give a stack of those six topics to the table, and then they have to decide which person of those six wants to research which topic, okay? So now they have their topics, and then we set the timer. So we give them four minutes each, and they spread out, we play music, and they can use their phone, their laptops. We bring three laptops with us for people who want to use that, and we encourage them to take notes. So we basically say, you are responsible for learning everything you can about this resource. And then we give them four minutes. Do-do-do. So they do that. Then after four minutes, we invite them to get into a different group with people who have their same topic. So all the people who did Labor Market Insights, you get together. 
Then we give them another four minutes to just share. So, okay, so Meredith and I had the same topic. Meredith, what did you get? This is what I got. And then I might say, ooh, I missed that. You know, so again, listening, taking notes, learning from each other, okay? And after that four minutes, we invite them to go back to their home group, okay? So now they're with their original six, and we give each person two minutes to share everything they learned about it. So if we've got six people, then that's a 12-minute session. And we kind of give them some prompts, the general who, what, when, where, why, right? Who benefits from this? What is this resource? How can I use it? When would it be helpful to a student? Where do I access it? And why might someone find it useful? After 12 minutes, then we bring back everyone and we sort of just debrief on it. And this is where we hear overwhelmingly, you know, oh my gosh, I had no idea. This is so cool. We had faculty say, this is perfect for what I'm teaching this week. You know, can you send me this? Um, I had two faculty say, hey, can you come in next week and do this activity with my students? Oh, that's awesome. Right. And so it is, I think it's just that learning by doing, right? This is literally active learning, right? And so it's just, we've been blown away. I did this with the admissions team also. And so for them now, when they go out and when parents are asking questions, you know, they can just pull up the website and show them. And Uconnect has a place where we have affinity group for prospective families as well. That's what's really, really great about it. So it's a really effective activity. Yeah, I love the sound of it, especially how interactive it is. Like I know thinking to my learning style, I'm the type that if I hear information, I have to immediately apply it or I will just forget it. It goes in one ear, out the other. <laughs> right. And, you know, it's not a lecture at all. There's no lecturing at all. OK. I love how you like you did it with faculty and staff, but also with the admissions team. That's super smart, especially when you have that community already built into your website. Right. I mean, they have me do a quarterly update for admissions. And so I just did that for them. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Instead of me, you know, going through a report, that's what we did. It was sort of a modified version, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a great idea. And also for the folks listening or watching, I'll be sure to include a link to uh, Laura's website that she's talking about in the show notes so you can go and check it out and see what she's talking about. I do have this and I use a show flow for every presentation I do. So if anyone wants to reach out and email me, I'm happy to just share that because it has the details. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's great. That'll be a great resource for folks. So Laura, why, I mean, you kind of touched on it, but why did you structure this session in the way that you did? Well, the first session that we did, which was basically what is career development and vocation, it was a lot of talking to them, explaining, you know, we did have them kind of share their own stories about how they got where they were. It just felt very classroomy. And I thought, it's hard to get faculty and staff to make time. How can I make this more engaging? And that's when I thought, oh, I need to go to my active learning thing. So kind of that's how we came up with it. We wanted to make sure there was some movement. We do these events after the last class, afternoon class of the day. So it's 415 to 530. I mean, it's long. We do give great food, but still, it's a long end of the day kind of thing. Yeah, you got to have some active learning at the end of the day. Yeah, exactly. Like on the note of the structure, I also love how sh like compact it is. I mean, it's 45 minutes that you are teaching all of these people pretty much everything they need to know about your website. Like that's incredible. Yeah, it is. Can't agree with you more. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remind me how many people are were in this session? Was it the entire cohort of, I think, 41 people or was it broken we offer two sessions of the same. So, okay. I mean, sometimes we get more or less, but I mean, the groups weren't huge. So there were maybe just three or four groups. So it wasn't a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, still super efficient. But you could do it, I think, with a much bigger group as well. I mean, that's what's great about it. It's totally scalable. Yeah, for sure. I am curious, what has been the feedback you've gotten from the faculty members who have participated or even the admission staff who have gone through the session? Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I think I presented it in the fall and I got, I think, three or four emails 
from people that just said, this is really amazing. It's a game changer. One of the things I didn't talk about was the outcomes. So again, once they see these six things and you can change up what you have them look at. I actually think for admissions, I had outcomes be one of them so they could see all of our FDS, our first destination outcomes. Well, they just locked onto that, right? To be able to then know how to use it and show the prospective families how it works. I think is really important. So they loved it. And, you know, I mean, all that data being so many of these families and anybody, right, they want to be able to see it. You can't just say, oh, our English majors get jobs. Yeah, it's not good enough. (laughs) Which they do, right? But instead, we can say, here's where our English majors over the past seven years have landed. These are the job titles. These are the grad programs. It's right there. And it's just, again, show, don't tell is really the key. And then faculty. I mean, I had a faculty member say to me, like, a lot of coaches got nominated because they helped them. And the coaches, like, I'm not connected with them at all. And when I say coaches, I mean athletic coaches. And one of them followed up and said, I cannot tell you how already I've changed how I work with students. And that was after the second session. He said, I had no idea He said, I was an athlete in school, in college. I never connected with the Career Center. This is so beyond me. He's like, this is really great. And so now we're doing, you know, individual programs for some teams as a result. So, I mean, the wide reaching impact of just sharing information is invaluable. Yeah. And I love, again, how active it is. It's not just, hey, here's a link to our website, explore on your own, because people may not have time or they'll forget. It's like getting them in a room and saying, here, explore, and then let's talk about it. And if you have questions, I'll answer them. Right. And I think that's important to remember, right? When we say career everywhere, we are really talking about career conversations everywhere, right? And so this is a great way to start a conversation, Um, it's just a tool that you can use when having those conversations. I love that. And I love that you've even gotten athletics involved. (laughs) I know. I know. Well, you know, we have a large group of all American athletes. I mean, a big percentage of our population, you know, that that's why they come to a a D3 school to play. And so we want to make sure that we're reaching out to those kids. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I know this is kind of a, a relatively new program and maybe you don't have like data results, but Maybe more anecdotally speaking, what kind of results have you seen? I mean, really, all I have is sort of the anecdotal. I can't, and I could probably go back and look. We do ask when students come in if they were referred by someone. So I have not had a chance to look at that. So that would be one data point to see if there are names on that referral that are also our career readiness champions. Like I said, we had the athletic training department reach out to us now, and they want to set up a pipeline for interns. Right. So again, that's just Jay came to our session. And so now we're working on an internship program with him. So it's all those little tiny things. And it's just, you know, it's what happens when you develop relationships. That's great. I've, it seems to be kind of a common thread I've been hearing throughout these interviews is that it's not always the data that drives you. I mean, that like improved data engagement is great. It's sometimes those individual stories, the students coming to you saying, hey, I got this job or I got this internship. Thank you. Or faculty coaches coming to you and saying, hey, this totally changed the way I interact with students. I keep hearing over and over that that's kind of what keeps people going in career services. Oh, yes, absolutely. We have this thing in our office. It's the success bell. It's called Ring for Success. So we have a bell. and It's really cool. I should send you a picture. But the students come in and, and they ring this bell when they get a job, an internship, accepted to a program. And I can tell you, like, we have a culture here that when we can, everyone drops what they're doing and we go out there and we clap and hear from that student and ring that bell. And, you know, that's really what it's all about. And just having a student then say, oh, I want to go in and ring the bell. Like, that's super exciting for them, too. So, absolutely. Oh, I love that. It's a tangible way to celebrate the victory. Yeah, it is. So, earlier you mentioned that you you kind of get faculty to participate in this program, or one way you have is asking students in this end-of-year survey that you do. So, once that happens, how did you go about getting that buy-in from faculty, convincing them to join this program? You know, 
I remember talking to a few people and they said, oh, you'll be lucky if you get eight. And I said, all right, eight's my goal. And I got 41. And for people coming from big schools, they may think, oh, that's nothing, right? But that's a big deal. (laughs) And I really didn't have to do a lot because again, I was planning on talking about this later, but there are people who, you know, when you talk about faculty, they're on a spectrum of career. And I know career can be a bad word on a college campus, right? Because we've got on one end, the people who are, you know, and I'm in a private liberal arts college, right? So learning is for learning's sake, right? Um, And then on the other end is, you know, maybe our professional, pre-professional programs of, you know, we're here, we're building skills so that students can go out and be, you know, professionals living lives of purpose and meaning, right? But the majority of people fall somewhere on this spectrum, right? And so to me, I used to spend a lot of time in my my career trying to convert the one end, right? If I could just convince them, like, this is important too, and all students need to do this and all of that. And I just realized um, and heard this great phrase from um, Kathy Davies, who was out of the, the studio, the life design studio, who just said, go with the goers. And to me, that's it. I say it all the time because sometimes you can get pulled down in like, but what, but what, but what, what if, uh, like, no, we're going to go with the goers. And to me, that's what this is about. We're going with the goers. My goal is not to make every faculty or staff member a career champion, right? But it's like, okay, who's out there who gets this, who is also passionate about helping students with career success? Let's find those people and let's just make sure they have the tools and skills that they need to get students to the next step, right? And so to me, that's what this is about. So, you know, if we just had gotten eight, awesome, then we would have done it for eight, right? Now, maybe below that, probably not. We'd probably do like individual, right? But I think if we just continue to grow, then we maybe we'll have a movement. And, you know, a lot of people said I'm on sabbatical, but will you include me next year? So I already think we'll have, you know, quite a few in our next cohort. So I'm just going with the goers. I love that phrase. I'm going to have to write that down so I remember it. It's simple. Yeah, I love it too. Because so many times I get pulled into the other and it's too much time wasted. Yeah, for sure. And I suppose by including that question on the student survey that I think is something like what faculty member has inspired you or something like that. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Had a positive impact on your career exploration or career success. Okay. Yeah, I imagine a question like that and the people who get nominated automatically means they're probably going to be the faculty that's more inclined to be more active with students and have those conversations. What was so great about it, too, is that that's how I started the request. And so many people were like, wow, I'm so flattered. I mean, a lot of people, again, right, they had no idea. It's not like they say, okay, we're going to talk about career now, and that's part of their agenda with students. You can realize, like, they have no idea the impact they might be having. And that's what's so beautiful about it. You know, like, wow, someone thought that I had an impact on their career. That's special. And those are the people. Yeah, that's so meaningful. Oh, I love that. I hadn't even thought about that part of it. But of course, like, not only will they be flattered to be mentioned, but I imagine that makes them even more inclined to want to learn how to do more. Exactly. And to realize they have an impact. This is important. You got to pay attention. I need to do this right, you know, and with attention. Isn't that why most of us would work in higher ed? Because we want to have an impact on students, ideally. (laughs) I know. I can't quit. I can't quit this uh, higher ed thing. (laughs) You're already 30 years in. I know. You must love it. (laughs) I do. I do. All right. Well, I want to talk a little bit about your Career Center website, um, since that's kind of a really key part of this session that you're doing with faculty. So can you just walk me through a little bit more about how it's structured, how you built it, the resources you have on it, anything else that you think is relevant? Sure. Well, I mean, this is hard because I think I like am like most people out there. This is my sixth position. And I've just been in Augustana about five years. And so every place I'd been in the 90s, I was learning HTML and we were writing <laughs> our own websites, right? In the 2000s, there were the web editors. So I just worked at a place where I had I was able to, you know, easily write my own content and have control of my own website. 
And then I came to Augustana and apparently this is a model that many schools have where really the common marketing department has control of that. And so the messaging is really external facing, right? And realizing that the website was not an option for us to be able to connect with current students. So we used our platform Handshake and that's great for a lot of things and I'm a big fan of Handshake. But in terms of the resource delivery and the functioning and the the design and aesthetic of it, it was really lacking and we needed a website. So, I mean, lo and behold, thank God um, for David, but um, that you connect. But you connect really, if you don't know, which I'm sure you do, Meredith, but if you don't know, you know, the story and the passion from the founder who was a student, who came back, had no idea, wasn't as plugged in into career and thought like, why don't more students know about the career centers at colleges and created a product that was really about that, connecting students to resources that are already available to them, right? Well, guess what? That's exactly what I needed. And I remember this was a four-year, like, how can we crack this nut? I got an email from Ryan and I thought, all right, I remember you connect. And there, there it went. So we were able to very easily transfer all of our content. So we already had most of our content. It was just a matter of getting it in a different platform, which, you know, is always a painful process, but it was pretty easy. And we were able to build our website in about two and a half months. And from the day we launched, it was, we use a QR code. Thank God they came back. You know, they were popular in the <laughs> mid, early 2000s. They came back. So we use a QR code and our traffic is, we just had our first year report and uh, we've got really great numbers. So, I mean, it's the best thing that we've ever done. We have students now who can access and get the resources that they need without having to come into our office or without having to have a personal invitation, but they can, they can find it and then come in and say, this was helpful. I need help with this little piece and how I fit in. So I can't say enough about it. I'm very glad to hear that. <laughs> uh, working for Uconnect. I'm curious, you mentioned the QR code. Where Are you putting that in like places throughout campus and that's how people can get to your website? Yeah, it's we should have it be called career QR code everywhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we have we have sandwich boards all over campus with it. We have stickers, you know, the stickers on your computers with it. We use a QR code with our event check-in as well. And right next to that then is the website QR code. So we use QR codes and it's the same one, right, for the website everywhere. It's on all of our documents. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's got to get that career everywhere. I don't know if that answers the question, but yeah, QR career codes everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. Yeah, I was just curious kind of how you were using that particular strategy. So I imagine, too, with the website, it's probably really helpful having everything kind of in one place, especially when you're doing these presentations like to faculty or to admissions to students. Yeah, it really is, because what I can do is I can do a Canva or a PowerPoint. But when I get to this part, I just close out of that and I'm just live on the website and I'm showing them and then I'll say, "Okay, what is the last thing a student asked you? And I don't have to, you know, open five different things or find the login to this, that, or the other. I just click on it through our website. And because we are connected, it's connected, uh, integrated because of all of our different integrations, it's really easy. Students don't have to log in and out to a lot of different things. And that's really great. There's also ways that we can put some resources that, like I teach a course right now. And so we can put some resources on there that it's for faculty and staff that they can access, but it's password protected. So there's great functionality there as well. And the coolest thing, honestly, is so because we um, pull them and we get our students to be able to subscribe to different communities, then we can send out information. So we send a weekly newsletter and all of that is curated content for that particular affinity group. And so that way we're not spamming students with stuff that's not relevant, but what's getting to them is very specific for what they have said that they're interested in. So 
I love it. And it's all my automated. I mean, I need to spend time setting it up, but once it's set up, it just, it goes. And I can just sit back and look at all the numbers, all the views, all the clicks. And perhaps most importantly, you have control over it. You are not having to go to a marketing team and try and be like, hey, I need this copy change or I want to add this article or this video. You can just do it. (laughs) I can just do it. And I've got a team of students who help me as well. So like, for example, right now we're after this call, I'm meeting with my alumni. I have an alumni board career development committee and there's maybe 18 people and they've all written a blog post, a guest blog post. Super easy through you connect, right? And then I just go in and I tweak it and I put in some fun pictures. And now for the rest of the semester, once a week, we'll have a, an alum highlight. And once that's set up, I don't have to do anything. So again, super easy. Don't have to get anyone's permission. I don't have to lobby for it to happen. I just make it happen. And then you can spend your valuable time doing something else. (laughs) Right. Something else. Right. (laughs) All right. I'm kind of curious, how has this website and your this session as part of your Career Readiness Champions Network program, how has it all enhanced or increased awareness of the work that you and your team are doing, or even the perception of the work that you're doing. I think that's the biggest piece is the perception, right? So that when we can show them that A, we even know the word affinity group, right? And B, to show them, like we have resources for all of these students. I think that gives a sense, it garners respect, right? And they can see us as a tool to get to the resources and uh, the expertise for students. Also, it takes away that whole piece of that we're just a resume shop and that we just help business majors. Because we know, I always say like accounting, yeah, we love it when they come in, but they don't really need a career center, right? They can find the job on their own, at least in this economy. It's all those other students, right? That So when we show that everyone's welcome and there's resources for everyone, regardless of X, Y, and Z, I think that really helps. You know, this is a great example. We have made huge strides with public health. So there are some departments that really, it's kind of straddles the line of pre-professional science, social science, it kind of does that. And so the faculty who are in there, they're practitioners, right? So because they're practitioners and they've been practitioners, they believe, and it's true, that they know how to do a job search in public health. And they have all the information and how possibly could a woman from career services who has to be a generalist, no. And I get that. I totally get that. But there are pieces of that, right, that are universal. And so having relationships and having that person come to our career pieces, I can't even tell you how that's opened up that space between our two departments. I have a career coach who specializes in health sciences, and she was invited to actually take the professional preparation course for our public health majors. And she took that whole course, and now they're, she's doing a lot of the sessions. She's coming in and sharing the pieces that are universal career, right? That are the, the etiquette, the LinkedIn, you know, all of those pieces. And then the faculty is really taking that. What is the public health piece? What's the difference here, you know? And so they're basically partnering to help those students. If we've gotten waylaid by the idea that, oh, they don't need our help, then we don't need to help them versus saying like, how can we work together? Like help us understand more about how public health is different than ours. You know, that could have turned out differently, but it's a wonderful partnership. So I think that that, That really is the key, and that's our goal in doing all of this by partnering with faculty and staff. Right. Just building that trust and credibility. I mean, that alone is huge. You know, after your three decades in career services and all this work, (laughs) all this work you've done with this. I sound so old, don't I? (laughs) (laughs) Experienced. Very experienced. Yes. Seasoned, I like to say. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. With all the experience that you have and all this work that you've been doing with the Career Readiness Champions Network, what advice would you give to other career services leaders who want to get faculty more familiar with their career resources? You know, I kind of already said this part, but I'll say it again. Go with the goers, right? Use the people 
that collaborate with those that are willing to collaborate with you. Don't neglect the ones who, you know, are all in and you don't even have to worry about them, but don't neglect them. Thank them. Make sure that they're recognized to their supervisors. I know we may think that faculty, you know, they just keep their folder of things for tenure and promotion, but, you know, faculty who already have tenure and who've already been promoted, they need that as well as our as our staff um, members. So keeping doing that. And then also really, like you said, like I'm coming up on 30 years in this field and we can't do things the way we did 30 years ago. We can't do the way things the way we did 10 years ago, five years ago, right? These students are different. Um, the the tools and resources and technology is different. And we were just having this conversation. I'm president of an organization where we just had like our 38 annual career fair. And, you know, we had abysmal student turnout. And, you know, what we want to do is sit and, you know, rehash the whole thing. And I'm just like... Is this what we need to do, right? Is a career fair a thing still? And, you know, is busing students two and a half hours to a city, you know? So I think that's it, is the advice is like, we need to let go of some of this antiquated way of doing things. And maybe we still do an event, but what does it look like, right? And how are we partnering with our employers? What do they need? Are we talking to our constituents? And so always growing, always changing and not being afraid to try new things. And I think, I'm sure people think I'm old, but I don't feel old and I don't feel like this is the same old thing every day. And I think that's because I'm going to continue to grow and develop and see how we can meet the needs of the students sitting in front of us rather than the the ways things used to be. Because it used to be great. I mean, I used to get 900 students at programs. Ha, be happy to get 90. <laughs> It just the world doesn't work that way anymore. Yeah, I suppose that's part of this evolution to kind of investing in your online and your digital presence because yes, yeah, students may not be as inclined to show up to event an event at this time in this place. Instead, they're gonna want to do some research at 10 p.m. before bed or 2 a.m. whatever floats their boat. Like <laughs> right, and just maybe after a conversation with their parents about what they're going to do after graduation, right? True. I mean, it's a just in time, like, oh, I guess I should Google career services. Well, we want our URL, our hit to come up for them and then pull them in. Yeah, for sure. Or I imagine like, I know for me as an alumna, like I, I wish my institution had kind of the labor market data that you have. Oh, yeah. Because I'm thinking like, as you go through your career, let's say you get a great job offer. Or, in, or you want to negotiate salary, you could go to Augustana's website and look up salary data and have that information whenever you need it to just go and make an educated negotiation. Exactly. exactly. And a lot of those other platforms, you have to log in, you have to give them your personal information, you have to answer a bunch of questions. Exactly. Or if you use BLS data, it's six to 12 months old. <laughs> <laughs> or older. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Laura, I want to be um, cognizant of our time here, so I'll start kind of wrapping this up. But is there anything else about this topic of getting faculty familiar with career resources that you would like to add or any questions that I didn't ask that I should have? I would say just as our students, their needs change, their learning styles change. So do our faculty, right? I mean, faculty, we, we're getting new faculty every day. And so just remember that to pay attention to the new faculty, welcome them. If they're new to campus, I mean, gosh, a request for a lunch or come over for a visit, you know, that can go really far. And those are the ones that are going to, most faculty stick around a long time, right? So that's a time well invested and in getting to know new faculty. So that would be to be one thing to add. Okay, great. Well, Laura, if it, people would like to connect with you or learn more from you, where is a good place for them to do that? Well, I'm a Gen Xer, so I still use email all the time. <laughs> so email, if you have questions, you can connect with me on LinkedIn, of course. Our Twitter and Insta feeds are all done by uh, our marketing person. So it'll get to me, but if you want something, email me. Okay. And I'll make sure to include your email in the show notes as well. Okay, great. 
All right. And now to close this out, I'm going to do our typical answer a question, leave a question thing. So Laura, I will ask you a question that our last guest left for you, and then you'll leave a question for the next guest. So our last guest was Sharon Belden Castingue of Wesleyan University, and she left you this question. A trustee of your college decides to give you $5 million for the Career Center. How do you spend it? You know, I have a whole plan already mapped out. So I would love to create a center that is sort of like a Venn diagram that it's threefold. So career and life design center where we're helping students with career and life design. We're helping faculty and staff learn and teach career and life design. Then we have an outward facing where we're helping our immediate community. We sit in an impoverished area and really build up that community. And then the the revenue generating piece would be offering design thinking concepts to the corporations in our area. So I've got a whole plan. And as soon as Sharon finds that trustee and wants to share it between Wesleyan and and Augustana, I'd be happy to to connect with her. (laughs) (laughs) Love it. And I'm not surprised at all that you already have a whole plan. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. Well, I like the second day our new president started. I just said, just dreaming over here in career. And I sent it over to her. (laughs) Nice. Be proactive. May as well get it on their radar. Exactly. Exactly. But I do have a question for the next person. Am I supposed to say it now? Yes. What question would you like to leave? I am so curious about how people are addressing the use of chat GTP with students around their job search materials. Because I'll be honest, I sent a love poem to my husband using chat GTP, and it was pretty good. And so I thought, ooh, how can we do this? So I'm just curious, really, how you are addressing its use in the job search process. Oh, interesting. I hadn't even thought of that particular use case for it. Reference letters, thank yous. I mean, it's quite astounding. That is a great question, Laura. I am excited to hear the answer to that one. You need a call-in topic for that. That's what you need. Do they do call-ins on podcasts? Yeah, <laughs> that'd be weird. <laughs> you could. I could do a live audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. Well, cool. All right. I'll make sure to ask the next guest that question. And then, Laura, thank you so much for joining me today on the podcast. It was really great to chat with you about kind of getting faculty more familiar with career resources. And I know that's going to be a very relevant topic for a lot of our listeners. So thank you very much for sharing your time and your knowledge. Well, thank you. I had a great time talking with you and I'm excited to share this. And if we can help get more students connected to their dreams, then that's better. That's what it's all about, right? Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you again, Laura, and have a good rest of your day. All right. Thank you. That's all for this episode of Career Everywhere. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to hit subscribe and rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you next time.